Hello everybody and welcome to another video. So, uh, it's technically past 12 o'clock for me here in Europe as I record this video, which makes it April Fools. And because Arena Net server time seems to be somewhat Europe based at the moment, like it's been at midnight for a long time that reset occurs, or an hour after midnight that reset occurs, they have actually dropped the April Fools stuff into Guild Wars 2. A very quick recap for those of you who are not familiar with this, every year at April Fools Arena Net have always suddenly and excitingly dropped some change into the game. Sometimes it's been very minor things like, oh your character is randomly female now, or oh your character is a stick man, or oh your character is the size of a mini and your minis are the size of characters, or they've been bigger things, the most famous one being the 2013 Super Adventure Box release which added a whole new uh, like mini game world uh, based around jumping puzzles um, to the game for April Fools. Another one of the big ones was the Commando class updates which uh, came out for Guild Wars 1 in its later years. So what did they do for April Fools this year? I wasn't expecting it to be Super Adventure Box returning whatsoever. Uh, Super Adventure Box has been this big thing that many people in the community like but it has not been added to the game for a long time. Uh, there was a huge upset over it last summer when um, Guild Mag candidly asked a question to a couple of devs, hey, what's going on with Super Adventure Box? And they revealed, hey, they weren't working on it and they didn't have any plans to bring it out because it didn't make any sense for Living World Season 2. Uh, a lot of people took this to mean that there was no chance Super Adventure Box was ever coming back, which wasn't really what was said, and so now it's been a bit sticky. Nonetheless, people were quite hopeful a few hours before the April Fool's patch dropped into the game because of a prior patch where ArenaNet fixed a bunch of bugs and changed the content of Black Lion Chests. One of the things they added to Black Lion Chests suddenly, a day before April Fool's, were the Super Adventure Box Minis. So these are now available from Black Lion Chests. You could take this two ways. You could take this as, oh, the timing is impeccable. This absolutely means Super Adventure Box is coming back. Or you could be one of these doomsayers and say, oh, this is the last nail on the coffin. Look, they're allowing us to get the rewards now. Even though Super Adventure Box isn't available, this means it's never coming back. I'm not really in either of those camps, especially now that the real April Fools thing has dropped in, which I'll talk to you guys about in a second. I believe they simply thought, hey, um, April Fools is coming. People are thinking about Super Adventure Box. Why don't we add these in here? And they are cool minis for what it's worth. I rep them on a lot of my characters, not characters that tend to appear in videos, but um, some of my alt characters, they tend to make noises. And I love minis that make noises. Those are the best. That's why you've been seeing the Kakaka hatchlings in a lot of my videos recently. So um, that's what went on with SAB. There was even an Occupy SAB 2015. There was a very real Occupy SAB 2014 where a bunch of players and devs too uh, sort of congregated in Ratasum outside the entrance of this minigame when people thought it was never coming back. And because of the addition of these to the Black Lion chests, it happened again today. May even still be going on by the time this video comes out for what it's worth. Um, I had a guildy tell me there were upwards of even five devs hanging out there at the same time too, talking about SAB and various things. So that's very cool, though I didn't participate. My internet's been out all evening. So uh, what has come in for April Fool's? Aeroplane mode. <laughs> Aeroplane mode is <laughs> quite fantastic. Um, I actually had a really cool experience of it turning on. I was just recording f footage for a video where I was going to talk about the, about the patch with you guys and the SAB stuff, and all of a sudden this thing dropped in game. So you will see me um, in Timberline Falls with my regular graphics and regular stuff happening, and then as I walk across a bridge, this filter appears, Gliss decides to lose her shit, and then she gets her arms out by her side, becomes an aeroplane, and starts running around everywhere. So uh, the specific changes here um, are that we've got a big effect, uh, a post-processing effect come across the screen that's making everything look old timey. You guys might remember one of the YouTube April Fool's jokes actually a few years back allowed us to do something like this. Uh, you can turn this off if you don't like it. Um, this is one of those things I think people would find is very obnoxious. You just kind of want to turn your post-processing off. It doesn't mean you'll miss post-processing for other things over this day, but hey, it's not going to be around for very long anyway, right? Um, so this is the one of the most obvious effects. The next effect, all characters, they will have their arms out by their sides and pretend to be Airplanes. We are basically wearing double helmets while this is going on. We have our regular helmet uh, equipped and then we also have like an aviator cap slotted over the top. Aviator cap has been one of these very old long-standing uh, Black Lion store items and uh, to top that even off uh, there are a bunch of new sound effects in the game. You will hear your character going Meow. 
stood for hours and hours and hours pretending to be planes. I love the thought that a bunch of devs and people record audio for that. It's the best thing in the world. Supposedly there's also a very cool sound effect for when you die. I haven't seen this and I'm not going to spoil it for you guys either. But uh, they really kind of went all out on this silly, silly concept. Where does this come from, you guys might ask, though? Why have we got this weird thing? I mean, yeah, swapping genders of characters is one of those generic things you could do on April Fool's that a lot of people would appreciate. Where did they get the idea for airplane mode? Well, uh, this really stems back to one of the earliest viral videos for Guild Wars 2 while it was still coming out. I believe this could have been in betas or maybe even just as the game launched. Um, a guy was PvPing and this happened to many people of course but there was this big video where a guy had been PvPing and his arms got caught stuck out by his side. Some old animation lock issue they had. And he could participate in combat. He could do anything he liked but as he was running around his character looked like he was an airplane. There will be a link in the description to it. It's one of the funniest videos I think that's ever come out for Guild Wars 2. It's hilarious seeing this guy lose it and basically start rolling on the floor laughing because his character is pretending to be an airplane. And so the devs knew about this and I think even in the video the guy says oh this should be a mode of some kind. Lots of people really said hey can we get a checkbox to do this? Can be this be like an emote we can toggle on and off? Um, and they never really gave us the opportunity to do that. They, they did appreciate it. It'd be funny. Uh, when the first Halloween came out now, I did the broomsticks to the game with the witch's outfit and um, the animation for, I believe, the Norn, when you are on a broomstick, featured this arms out at the side funny airplane thing. So, like, if you were a Norn on a broomstick, he was also pretending to be an airplane. I used to have a lot of footage of Natalie doing this. And um, when they were ever asked about it after this came into the game, they kind of said, hey, look, what we did with a Norn here on the broomsticks, this was kind of our homage to it. You know, this is, well, you're not going to get a Felimo box, but there is this here if you want it because it's so funny. Um, and so then it was sort of just let to lie. Until now, until this April Fool's, I guess they wanted some cool ideas for what to do and they thought back to this old airplane mode and they added it. They didn't just put everyone into this animation lock, they went the whole hog. They gave us sound effects, they gave us this filter and it really is very funny when you go to very populous areas of the game and you see tons of people with their friggin' arms suck out. Um, everything works as well. If you want my recommendation, you guys should at least try mining stuff or, you know, cutting down trees. Uh, dancing is a really classic fun one and a lot of people were even saying it's really cool to run around as a char at the moment because they're not going to be on all fours. So that's really cool. Um, if you are concerned about PvP, it is there in the Heart of the Mists, but as this footage will show you, it isn't there once you load into the arenas themselves. So nothing uh, too major there. Though it is in full force in World vs. World. So, uh, that's April Fools. I also do want to talk very briefly in this video about the patch that came out too. Um, mostly it's been bug fixes. There's been some changes to uh, uh, like class skills and just various small tweaks and bug fixing things for them. The most notable thing that I just wanted to talk about for the classes at least is foot in the grave for the necromancer. They had the, uh, this trait is the trait that gives them stab when they're in death shroud. Uh, it used to be very powerful in world versus world and even that alone could allow you to run in melee trains and so forth. But um, with the new stability change I have heard all the necromancers complaining they basically have no opportunities anymore. Uh, well, so now apparently this uh, trait also stun breaks when you enter Death Child 2, which is a big thing. The application of stability is not the same as stun breaking. They just tend to go hand in hand. Here they will go hand in hand again. I believe this is world versus world motivated, though I can't be 100% sure. So here's a selection of bug fixes that I have things to talk about. They say they fixed a bug that delayed damage from falling, so you could actually take fall damage and then nothing would happen for a while and then you would die. They are trying to fiddle around with a full damage damage thing because if you look at um, the fact they've got an expansion coming out and you look at the clunky stuff about the game, the things that are still clunky and you get those very specific certain people get very angry and outraged at tiny things. What is one of those things people can get very annoyed about? Uh, it's the weird fall damage thing in this game, right? Where you give yourself swiftness, you run down a slope and all of a sudden you die at the bottom. It is ridiculous and it certainly um, is a huge problem in my opinion when it comes to competitive PvP and even World vs. World as opposed to an extinct 2. So um, this is something they seem to be trying to fix. They even had an patch note saying it was fixed that it clearly wasn't. Um, so I guess they're just toggling with that. They're toying with it. They will be toying with it anyway considering the new World vs. Is World Borderlands has uh, changes to full damage and stuff and will make us immune to it. Um, moving on, they say they fixed an issue that decreased the size of the loading screen art. I speculated that this had changed because they were going to put law back on the loading screens. Doesn't look like they're doing that. A lot of people did come back and say to me, oh no, this is because of the beta streaming client where if you don't have the game fully downloaded but you're still playing it, you'll have like a little bar there showing you how much progress you've downloaded, which is really cool, but not everyone obviously needed that special.
space there. So this has now been rectified. They say that they fixed an issue which prevented the field of view from resetting to the specified value when loading a map. Now, I'm pretty sure I've been suffering from this. I've had a few comments from people as well saying, hey, the camera changes are cool. And I've seen in your videos that you've got the slider maxed out. But for some reason, I have higher FOV on my screen. What's the deal there? And I think in some situations, it may be people running Windows. In some situations, it could be people running it even at a higher resolution. But it's been more than that. And even right at the start of this footage, maybe I'll replay it for you guys. Look at Timberline Falls with me right now. Uh, Dredge Hunt Cliff, sorry, with me right now. You can clearly see I have a higher FOV than I've had for a while. So this is really cool. The game's been looking phenomenal. I'm very, very happy with this change. They say they fixed a bug in which text appeared green in chat bubbles created by player chat. I had no idea why this was going on. You would have noticed local chat, many chats there. Oh, our text was all in green for some reason. How a bug like that ends up getting in the game, I have no idea. Some people thought it could have been because of St. Patrick's Day in my guild, but then it was still there after that, so... Who knows? And lastly, that they detail here, um, and this is a pretty big one, they say they fixed a bug that could result in characters permanently keeping stealth on death. Um, and this has been an issue. I played a courtyard match uh, two days ago, three days ago, and they had an invisible power necro, like a, a pure invisible power necro. He was doing damage to us, and we could not see him, we could not do anything. I was just getting gibbed on the roads on a pure glass alley, which means read like three hits and I'm dead. And he was like pure stealth, and it was ridiculous. I don't think he had any idea it happened. He must have just uh, died in a shadow refuge or something, and this bug kicked in. Um, I have heard a story that apparently there's been entire teams in this kind of weird perma stealth situation. Uh, sorry if you're only just hearing about it now, it's actually been fixed. Um, a fix that went into the game that was not in their patch notes, but someone did post a video about. Again, there's a link if you want to check it out. But the char footsteps, which will appear like if you're running across snow, they were always, I believe, just like generic footsteps or didn't exist at all. So uh, something that, you know, real char fan players, which I can't say I'm one of, um, really, really noticed. But well, apparently this was fixed too, and they do look cool. So there you go, char footsteps have been fixed. Um, a, an item that was supposedly in the game, which was the first tier of um, recipes for spears, harpoons, and tridents, uh, was always hidden. It wasn't discoverable. Well, now apparently you can discover those, so that's cool. And that's pretty much it, in my opinion, for the really important bug fixes that have come out. There have been, in addition to um, Super Adventure Box minis being added to Black Lion chests, there have been a couple of other changes on that side of things too. The Quaggan Carrier Mail Deliverer has uh, been released. Black Lion Ticket Scraps, once again, have had their rates uh, increase for Black Lion chests, which is good because I still feel like it's kind of low. Um, they also have Teleport to a Friends, which have been increased, which are actually really fun, and I've had a few of them before. And they have rotated the die kits you can get out of Black Lion chests. So before it was a bunch of die kits like a Toxic die kit, Molten die kit, for example, and now it would have changed to like the Glint's die kit and so forth. So that has been kind of on rotation, and that's changed. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's everything that's changed with the game. Don't have too long to make a video today because, as I say, my internet's been out and it's been kind of sucky. But uh, I hope you're all up to date. Have fun with airplane mode, and definitely check out what it's like when you die make sure you play with uh, the game audio on at least for today uh, and maybe crank up at least your dialogue volume i'll see you tomorrow for some more videos have a good evening mm -hmm.